I'm going to cut through the bull, cut, cut through the bull, cut through the bull, cut, cut through the bull. We're going to cut through the bull. We're going to sort through the mess. We're going to get the facts straight, and then we're going to swipe left. Come on, say it with me, guys. Y'all know this is what we do every Saturday. We're going to cut through the bull. We're going to sort through the mess. We're going to get the facts straight, and then we're going to swipe left. Welcome, guys. Thank you so much for being here. It's my favorite day of the week. It's Saturday. It's 12 o'clock. And that's my cue to do what I do down on these YouTube streets, baby. Cutting through the bull, sorting through the mess, getting all the facts together, honey. And then what? Swiping yes. left, honey. Thank you guys for being here. I got a whole lot of stuff that I need to go over with you all. So without any further ado. <laughs> Hello guys, welcome, welcome, and thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of Swipe Left. I really appreciate you guys. Let's not waste too much time. Wait a minute. Hold on. Hold on. The shirt. I know. I know. It, if you met my family, you would understand. Trust me. You would. You would understand. They're an interesting bunch, honey. An interesting bunch. And it does actually tell to why I don't take shit. I'm quick on my feet. And my mouth is vicious. It's a true testament. If you knew my family, baby, you would definitely understand and get in line. That's that's the part. And get in line. <laughs> Lord have mercy. They don't fool with me like that. They don't try to take me to any places that I don't want to go. And there's a good reason why. Anyway. Anyway. Um, I'm going to swipe left on that whole situation. I'm going to swipe left on that whole situation. And we're going to get on to our show. So let's go. Swipe left. Okay. So. This is what we do. It's Saturday. It's 12 p.m. Today is Martin. It's not February anymore. It is March the 2nd. And what am I getting ready to do? I'm going to cut through the bull. I'm going to get through the mess. And when I get the facts straight, then I'm going to what? I'm going to swipe left. Thank you all for being here. Let's go. Okay, first story, real quick, because I don't do these folks. So, real quickly, because there's a lot of little stories that were actually out here this week that I said, I'm not talking about that. I just refuse to talk about that because it's not what this is about. This is about things that I caught in my travels. Not everything that was going on, but what struck me interesting in my travels. So, some things that are going on, I'm not even talking about. Like that whole politics situation, I ain't even doing it. Don't have it to do. But this... I couldn't pass up because it was just a bit much. Kardashians. I don't watch the Kardashian show. I don't have anything against the Kardashians. They're they're wonderful. They have a whole empire. They have a whole empire. They are undeniable that they are marketing genius and people love them. But I'm not one who, I'm not a fan of their show or anything like that. So I don't really do them like that. But this little th situation they have going on with Jordan Woods and Tristan Thompson. Okay, so this is crazy. And I had to actually, when I heard it and I said, okay, well, what's really going on? And I start really paying attention and I said, oh, okay, well, I mean, you got to take this back to the hood. Take it back to the hood, because at the end of the day, the, the Kardashians, it's a group of sisters. You understand? Sisters. And that's the important word. Sisters. No matter what they do, who they sleep with, how they do it, how much surgery they have, what things their mom does that people don't appreciate. It don't matter. At the end of the day, they are sisters. So some of this I understand. So from what I gather, Kylie and Jordan Woods 
were best friends. Chloe is married to Tristan Thompson. Jordan Woods went and played Seesaw on top of Tristan and it came out and now it's pretty much the Kardashians are in attack mode and the person under attack is Miss Jordan Woods. Like I said, let's take it back to the hood. If my sister was around and my best friend slept with my sister's husband and I had a couple more sisters and we all knew about it, what would we be? We would be in attack mode. We would be in attack mode. There would be an X on your back and you would get whatever was coming to you. Because at the end of the day, they are what? They are sisters. And this is what sisters do. So I don't know why everybody is like, oh, I can't believe she did her. Oh, they share, man, that's okay. They're sisters. Let them deal with it their way. So I'm not really shocked by the breakup of the friendship, by the dissolving of any businesses or anything like that. I definitely think that they are going to, yeah, they're going to try to rake Miss Jordan over the coals because she she broke girl code and she was a little bit out of order. She literally stepped over the line. That was a, a bit much. That was a bit much. It was, and, and the funny thing is, now you know I'm a big Mary to Medicine fan. Doesn't this remind you of the whole situation with Mariah and, and Quad and Mariah's sister and all that? Yet, we were supposed to believe that Mariah and Quad be, you know, kept on being friends and everybody kept being friends. But these were the same allegations that actually happened. But here, they're not allegations. Folks said, okay, this was what it was. This is how it went down. There ain't no way we would still be friends. We would not still be in business. We would not still be dealing with each other. Baby, listen, you cannot hurt my sister. You can't. You can't hurt my sister. And that, I mean, that, it's real. Blood is thicker than water. I don't care what nationality you are. Blood is thicker than water. I have two God sisters. I ain't not playing them games with my God sisters. So I know to actually have two blood sisters, I, mm-mm, no, you out of order. You out of order. So anyway, that's all going on there. I'm not going real deep. Like I said, I don't really know them all like that because I don't really watch their show. But that was really good juicy tea, honey. I'm like, chow, this is the thing that James Caldwell books are written about, honey. Uh, you know, little sorted three ways and triangles and things like that. I, You know, I live for that kind of stuff. That's the type of stuff I actually write about in my fiction novels. But look at that, real life, honey. Your best friend sleeping with your sister's husband. Whew, honey. Mmm, mess, honey. Anyway, so... Last I heard, Jordan was going to be appearing on Red Table Talk with Jada Pinkett Smith. She's really good friends with the family. I don't watch that either, so I don't know, but I'm tempted. I'm tempted to tune in, honey, to see what's really being said. It's just too juicy. So I may, I may, I may go into it. If I do, I'll let y'all know what happens. But anyway, I just had to mention it because that was kind of going on, and it just kind of shook me that people were like so shocked that they were attacking his sister their sisters anyway let me know what you all think do you think it's a shame that they're actually attacking jordan and they don't want to just forgive her or do you think that this is what actually happens when you break down to sisters and the bonds that sisters have let me know what you all think down there in the comments and for now i'm going to just swipe left okay okay one thing that I do have to do before we go on is my thank yous. And I should have did this at the top of the show, but that's okay. That's okay. My show, I can actually clear it up and do it whenever I want. Thank yous to 
Miss Felicia, last week Miss Felicia actually did a drop into my Cash App. And I really appreciate that, baby. Thank you so much. And then I got a super chat on the last show from Spiffy. And you will see him. He's actually a really great supporter. He's always there. Um, it's When you see him in the chat, it's Spiff, S-P-I-F-F dot Y. But it's actually just Spiffy. Cute little guy. Cute as he could be. And he did a super chat to me last week and I really appreciate it. Thank you so much, baby. And I definitely wanted to give you all a shout out. Thank you. <laughs> Swipe left. All right. Now, speaking of Jada Pinkett, Jada Pinkett was actually into another little situation that really didn't have to do so much with her. It was a whole fashion, but we got a lot of fashion moments this week. A lot of little stuff happened with fashion moments. But at the Oscars, Billy Porter, Pittsburgh's own Billy Porter, gagged the children. Gagged. Do you hear me? He gave the kids gag, honey. When he hit the red carpet in a piece of androgynous perfection is what it was. The top half was a full male tuxedo with a little twist. She ain't a little rough around the collar and all that. But it was full masculinity at its best. From, well, it was, it was like an umpire waist. And then you go down. It was the picture of femininity. It was a full ball gown. Everything was done in the best black velvet that Christian Siriano could get his hands on. Do you understand? It was it was an absolute fashion orgasm is what it was. I thought it was flawless. And the fact that he hit the red carpet, this is not new for Billy Porter. Billy Porter has always pushed the envelope. Billy Porter is an advocate for the kids. He is a voice for the people. He is uber talented. And he's never been afraid. He's never been afraid, and he is very approachable. And he's he's everything that I love in my stars. Okay? My stars and and the things that I strive to be. I say it all the time. I'm always talking about it, and I always say that nobody likes a bitchy queen. I say it all the time. And it's the truth. No one likes a bitchy queen. I don't want to be bothered with the drag queen. And she could be the, the most beautiful queen. And she could be the most talented with the baddest clothes. But if she's a nasty bitch, I don't have nothing for her. I'm not going to her shows. I'm not supporting her. I'm not going to purchase her things. I'm, not, I'm just not going to do it. I'm not going to deal with her. People want to be able to approach you and people want to, to to feel like it's okay to love on you. And these are all the things that are Billy Porter. Okay? So I could tell you, and I haven't had any conversations with Billy or anything, but I could tell you Billy Porter don't give a shit about these fools that are out here bashing him about his what he wore on the carpet. Baby, he busted it up, honey. He busted up the red carpet. I saw a video, actually, on his Facebook fan page, baby, of Miss Glenn Close seeing him, honey, and she looked down the bottom and gave, well, all right. I said, uh-huh, uh-huh. And that was the, the, the reaction. But you couldn't do nothing but love it. You know, it was, she wasn't shading. It was like, now he done broke this up, honey. And that's what he did. He gagged you all, honey. Gagged the kids, honey. He let you all have it. And people are mad, baby. They are mad to my, oh, you know, it's, he's attacking male masculinity. And no, no. Oh, and it's that gay agenda. Child, there's no agenda. The agenda was fashion. Say it with me. 
fashion. That was the agenda. That was the agenda. He wanted to be sharp as hell. Mission accomplished. It was nothing that deep. He wasn't trying to get at you all. He made an outfit choice. And that's all that it was. It was an outfit choice. And then there was a deeper meaning into the outfit choice. But it had it was an LGBTQ thing. Maybe you wouldn't get it. Well, a whole lot of the LGBTQ didn't even get it. Because there's a lot of us that are out of touch. It actually had to do with the ballroom. There was a death not long ago. Hector Extravaganza, legend in the ballroom, passed on. He's gone off home to glory, honey. And this was an outfit that he wore back in the day. And it was iconic. When he did it, it broke the children up. It broke the children up. This was another version, and it was paying homage to that. And he broke it up. He just happened to be going to a heterosexual function because he is a star. He's a star. And he went and he busted it up. And he gagged the gays. He gagged the straights. He gagged the questionables. He gagged the lesbians. He gagged the trans folk. He gagged everybody. Everybody had to stop and look, even if you if you didn't like it, if you did like it, if you were kind of confused. He got your attention. He is the thing that most people were talking about. It was the first thing that folks were talking about. And I'm here for it. I'm here for it. But I can promise you, Billy Porter doesn't give a shit. And why I said Jada Pinkett, Jada Pinkett was the first one I saw who was like, took a lot of heat. People actually attacked her, you know, on social media because she said how sharp it was. She stood in it. She thought it was sharp. She thought he busted it up. And they attacked Jada. Now, y'all know better than attack Jada because Jada don't play them kind of games. But they attacked her. A mess. It was a mess. And it was so funny. The sad thing of it all, I think I seen more attacks from my own people. I saw tons of attacks from LGBTQ folk. And again, I was like, just ridiculous. We still gonna fight and protect y'all, but y'all need to get y'all shit together. Truly. Billy Porter gagged the kids, honey. And that's it. Swipe left. Really quickly. Really quickly. Because I don't want to go too deep into this situation. R. Kelly. Okay, so we know R. got indicted, turned himself in over this past week. Posted bail. It was $100,000. Who posted the bail? It was a female friend of his, a 47-year-old woman, who is not a, she's not a love interest. She, well, child, she's 47, so, you know, that ain't even knows his speed. Anyway, but she's 47. That was Shade, for those of you who didn't care. That was Shade. Ooh, it was Shade. Anyway, but she's 47 years old, so he wasn't looking at her, child. But she is a, she's a business owner. She has several different businesses and things of the nature. One of the businesses that she actually has is a, she has several daycare centers. And I was like, oh my goodness. This is the thing that stuck out for me. So that's what I'm saying. I don't even have a picture of this chick or anything like that. Not even really interested in her all like that. But the thing that sparked an interest in me was sometimes you have to make a choice. Do I really stand by my friend or do I kind of just stay over here and keep quiet? For my own protection. Because people are so fickle. And people jump onto things. And people feel so strongly about certain things. The first thing that came to mind for me. Is this going to harm her? She is a daycare. And then you're entangling yourself into this R. Kelly situation. And he's actually under scrutiny about pedophilia. 
and you actually run several daycare centers. And there, there, there's this whole thing about whether it was her money or wasn't her money. or it doesn't even make a difference. But that was my question. Do you think that this is going to harm her reputation and her business because she stepped out and tried to help her friend out? I don't know. Just a question. Just a question. I'm interested to see what you guys have to say. Hit it in the comments. I want to see what you have to say. I know how I feel. I think that people are very fickle. And I think that people may actually give her a hard time. People who are on the silence R. Kelly train, I think they may actually give her uh, a, a hard time. And then my question is, is that fair? Is that fair? I'm not going to say whether it's fair or not. Um, it's just a question. Just for my own, my own little curiosity. How do you all feel? Do you think this is going to hurt her? Or do you think that this is going to just blow over? I think it's actually going to hurt her. I really do. But tell me what you think. Anyway, I said I wasn't spending a whole lot of time on that. Swipe left. Okay. I want you all... I was child, I was rolling through. I was rolling through, I'm rolling through. And I, I hit the button and I said, what? And, oh my goodness. I want you all to take a look at this video clip. Check it out. Baby, <laughs> there was a whole lot going on, wasn't it? It was a whole lot. I'm like, what is going on here? You know, do you have a friend? I mean, I am the friend that is is very dramatic. So you know, I I'll get it all the time. All my friends would rat me real bad about me being dramatic, but that's just like a natural thing for me. But. Do you have any friends that are that dramatic? Who speaks in that decibel? Who in the hell speaks in that decibel? And I, I really, it, it was so, it was so much crazy that I, I, I needed to know what is the rest of the background? What really went on? Because the one girl was just so over it. If she was so over it, like, oh, bitch. <laughs> you know, she was so over it. And the other girl was so stressed. I said, she would give herself a heart attack. She was so stressed. I said, girl, you are really over dramatic. And then there's a little splash of a little mental situation sprinkled on top of it. Because when she gave shut up, honey, and she went to stomping off, honey, and gave, cook, 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 I said, girl, first of all, it's some terrible shoes. See, child, listen, listen, and you know I'm petty. I'm very petty. So I had to slow it down so I could check out her shoes. Her shoes were ugly as hell. They were the ugliest shoes. I said, see, ugly shoes will make you walk hard, honey. When your shoes are ugly, you tend to stomp. And the way she stomped off from there, I, I just couldn't do it. I was like, girl, ugly flats will make you stomp. She might want to try like a cute pair of pumps or something. It might take some of that crazy off. But her crazy was just too much. I don't know what it was all about, but first of all, the, the other girl, I don't even think the other girl is really a good friend to her because if she is that overdramatic, she wasn't very nice to her. If you have a friend that's a little touchy and a little overdramatic and a little bit, got a little sprinkle or something else going on, you kind of give them a little leeway. She was giving her nothing, honey. She was just as short with her and just as patty. I said, Lord have mercy. And when she would talk to the other woman, I was like, she just disregarded her, just dismissed her. It was a mess. That was a mess. But that 
stopped me. I don't know how old that clip is or anything, but it stopped me in my tracks, and I did. I have to admit it. I, I watched it a lot of times, like a couple of times. A lot. A lot of times. And I was kiki in my ass. <laughs> Baby, she was a bit much. <laughs> Swipe left. Okay, so I told you I had a lot of fashion moments here. Here's one. Um, this next person, I am by no means a fan of hers. Not at all. Not at all. But check her out. Did you see that? Did you see that? You all know, anybody who's been following me for a while and watches my, I do a review on the Real Housewives of Atlanta. I have been for a very long time. Um, it's one of the reviews that I'm actually known for pretty much, but I, everybody knows I am not a Portia Williams fan in the slightest. I give Portia such a hard time. I really do. And, and yeah, ain't nothing personal. She's just not one of my favorite characters on the show. And I do tend to give her a hard time. Okay? But, one thing that I do is I give credit where credit is due. I've always said she's she's a beautiful, beautiful woman. She's not a girl. And she definitely isn't a girl. She's getting ready to be a mother. So I've congratulated her about that. So this I'm not gonna drag her at all. So don't don't get your you know child folks choke the folks be trying to give it to me, baby. Don't get all up in arms. So this is this is a good portion moment. Y'all might want to write it on your calendars. Okay, so I've said congratulations to her on her her being pregnant and her being engaged to get married because those are things that she wanted. So congratulations on that. That's always, it's wonderful. But I've always said she was a very beautiful woman. I've always said that she keeps herself together very nice. She keeps her body right and she dresses, okay? She dresses. Miss Portia, girl, you don't miss a beat. This is is one of the most beautiful photos that I have seen of a pregnant woman in quite some time. And I love seeing, I do, I love seeing women who are pregnant and they, they keep everything together. They do, they always look really beautiful, but this was so chic and this was so well done. And then I found out it was actually, it was a custom Claude Levy, uh, is it Kamini gown? And it was just perfection. It, I mean, look at it again. That is drop dead gorgeous. Dro I mean, drop dead gorgeous. Everything from the gold neck cuff to the, the, the ponytail being low. It was so well thought out and styled so well. She looked so good. She really did. This was actually for Portia's baby shower. She turned her baby shower out. Turned it out. And then even, I mean, down to the bronze highlight on her cheek. And this, I said, Portia girl, get on up off my screen with your foolishness. You did that. You did that, Ma. I ain't, I ain't mad with you. I'm not today. We are definitely celebrating Portia Williams and her ability to slay. So I'm going to give it to you, Portia. Today's a good day. Well, most days for you fashion-wise are a good day. But today's a good day, girl. I ain't saying nothing smart. I ain't saying nothing shady. But I'll catch you again on Sunday, Miss Portia. <laughs> anyway, I thought she looked great. Anyway, let's move on. Swipe left. Okay. And while I'm on my Real Housewives of Atlanta, let's continue. Kenya Moore. Kenya Moore. Another one. You all know I have never been Team Kenya. Never. Never, never, never. I have always fought with the Team Kenya folk. We have just never seen eye to eye. We gets at it. You understand me? That whole team, what is it, Team Twirl? Y'all swirl yourselves on out of here, honey. But Team Twirl, y'all's girl, she was out. 
with her beautiful little baby, Brooklyn. Gorgeous. She's absolutely breathtaking. And that's another thing. I give Kenya a very hard time. You all know I don't really care for her as a character on the show. Y'all know that. And I give her a hard time. But she is a very beautiful black woman. I've always said that. I've always been very proud of the things that she's actually done. As far as the talent she has and the businesses she... All of that. I've always given her what was due to her. And when it was come time to read her, I've given her that as well. Because it was due to her and I've let her have it on a review. I've let her have it. But poor Kenya done introduced baby Brooklyn into her twisted land. The baby ain't turned a year old and she had already learned how to get thrown out of a, a place. I s you done taught the baby how to be kicked out of, the, out of a restaurant at a few months old? Really, Kenya? Child, Kenya was down to a restaurant. I don't even know what restaurant it was. But, and this I actually thought was, I, I thought this was a little extreme. I did, because Kenya's extreme, but this was a bit extreme. She was at the restaurant, and she did something that she needed to do that mothers have to do, which is change baby Brooklyn's pamper. Now, Kenya, girl, you ain't got no home training. Do you not have any home training? This was a bad move, okay? This was a bad parent move. Very bad parent. She took baby Brooklyn and slung her right on out there at the table, baby, and changed her diaper at the table in the restaurant. You heard what I said. She changed the baby's diaper at the table at the restaurant and the the folks told her you and your baby and that shitty diaper has to go <laughs> they told them to get back don't I don't want to hear it nope get your pamper get your baby get your shit get your diaper bag Get out. <laughs> they put her out. Put her out. Now, I don't, again, I don't know all of the details, but I will tell you this. Changing a diaper at a table, period, is disgusting. Period. And then a, a shitty diaper, even if it was just a wet diaper, you don't put your baby's soiled behind and diaper up on the table. You don't do it on the chair. You don't do it in your lap. You don't do it, period, at the table where people eat. That is disgusting and that is nasty. Where are you raised at? A barn? That's disgusting. But did it warrant her being thrown out of the restaurant? That's embarrassing. They didn't have to do all that. They could have come over and said something to her. And then what they should have done, if it was my restaurant, what we would have done, I would have had my hostesses ask her, does she need anything to, you know, to, to go ahead. You know, it, it was, it was, this was actually a learning. It was a, it was, it was a, a, a chance to actually learn something because obviously she doesn't know that that's filthy, you know? So I, I think I would have had my, and I would have definitely had another, a woman, to do it. I wouldn't have had another man to do it. I would have had a woman to go up and talk to her and say you can't, kind of can't do that at the table because it may upset some of the other guests. You know, I wouldn't have led on that you was old, nasty, full honey. But, you know, deep down, I'd have been like, give a girl what? What's really going on here? But I don't know. So I, I would love to know what led up, how the conversation actually led up to the actual throw out of Miss Kenya Moore. Because, you know, Miss Kenya is something, honey. So I, I'm, I'm thinking she must have got real smart with him or something. And they gave her, girl, you and your baby can get on out of here, honey. But um, it was a little extreme to throw her out. 
I, I, that was a little extreme, I thought. Tell me what you all think. I thought it was extreme, but if she was acting like Kenya from the show, which I'm sure there is a difference between Kenya Moore, the woman, and Kenya Moore, the caricature. But um, they threw her out, baby. Threw her out, baby. Her and that poor baby Brooklyn that learned how to be thrown out of a restaurant, child. Ain't even a year old. Lord have mercy. Swipe left. Okay, so let's talk about the art of throwing shade. Virginia. Virginia. And I love the DMV. I love the whole little DMV situation. Love it. All of that. D.C., Virginia, Maryland, all of it. All that and all the little stuff around it. But down there to Virginia, honey, you all need to get that Pam Northam, honey, that little governor's wife. She's a shady little piece, honey. Shady, Miss Northam, honey, down there to the governor's mansion. And you know how at the governor's mansion, they always host little trips for the children to come through and they go and they see the mansion and they talk and they visit and all of that? Well, during a visit down to the governor's mansion in Virginia, somewhere in her pea brain mind, old Pam decided it would be a good idea to hand these children, and a lot of them were African American, pieces of cotton as a parting gift. Not a keychain, not a t shirt, not a goodie bag with, you know, little trinkets and candy and things, but a piece of cotton. Really, Pam? But should we really be all that surprised? Because this is Pam, the wife of the fool who was caught up in the scandal about doing blackface when he was in college, who denied it at first and then had to backpedal a pussy pop and say, oh yeah, that was me in, in the picture. That's his wife, Pam. For real, Pam? Then you actually had the nerve to make the statement. Can you imagine being ensla an enslaved person and having to pick this all day? Really, Pam? And you thought that was a good idea. Pam who eats Spam down there to the Virginia. Really? I love my uh, Virginia folk, but I don't love Pam. I'm telling you, I don't care for Pam. Pam's a clown. She's a clown. Her and her husband, they're clowns. Y'all definitely got a little Barnum and Bailey thing going down there to the governor's mansion down in Virginia. Anyway, a mess. Just too much shade and just too much stupidity. And of course, she's come out and made an apology. An old, you know, the more empty apologies. Apologize for what? What are you apologizing for? Because parents got in touch with you and spanked that tail and told you that they didn't appreciate it? A mess. A mess. Do better, Pam. Do better. Life is not all about spam sandwiches. You understand? It really isn't. Do better. Swipe okay, life. let's talk about movies, which is one of my one of my favorite things is movies. Movies, movies, movies. There are two movies that are actually coming out in the summer, and I am so excited. Usually, and I'm usually not. Usually not. But Child's Play is actually being redone and it's actually coming out this summer. I am usually never 
a fan of remakes of movies, especially not horror movies, because generally all they do is they screw up some of the storyline and they they push things to be more gruesome and more gory than they've been in the past. Or what they'll do is they will highlight things that weren't able to be highlighted before. Prime example is when they redid Nightmare on Elm Street. Nightmare on Elm Street was a great movie, Wes Craven. It was, it was great, the original. But then when they redid Nightmare on Elm Street, the first one, they redid it. They actually pushed that narrative. See, the narrative about Freddy Krueger, Freddy Krueger, for those of you who don't know, um, he was more than just the, the guy with the knives and all of that. That wasn't really, you know, that became his, his little go-to as he got into the dream world. But in real life, not real, real life, but real life in this, the script. Real life, before Freddy Krueger actually passed on to the supernatural realm, he was actually a child molester. Okay? So, yeah, he is a scary somebody all the way around. That's the actual story of Nightmare on Elm Street. Freddy Krueger was a child molester who the people in the area got together and took the law into their own hands, and they burned him alive. And then he came back in a supernatural realm and he attacked their children. Once their children, actually, those same people's children became teenagers, he attacked their children. That's the actual story of Freddy Krueger. When they remade the movie, they focused more in on the predator and the child molestation portion of Freddy. And, you know, that was because there was a change in times, you know. Back when the movie was first created, that would have never gotten an R rating. You know, now we're so desensitized to everything, you could pretty much get an R rating for anything other than actually seeing um, the actual insertion and then the actual ejaculation. Other than that, you can get an R rating. You know what I mean? So that's generally what happens. But Child's Play is being redone. Child, I love Chucky, honey. I love Chucky. Now, I ain't like all that Brad and Chucky and all that extra stuff. But the first one, honey, I'm your friend till the end. Heidi ho. Ha, 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 ha. Child, I loved it. I loved it. He was just as crazy. With, and he had a bad wig. Party City. <laughs> bad wig. Get old, bad old red wig, honey. But I loved it. So I'm really interested to see what's going to happen. And from what I see in the trailer, it it looks, it doesn't look like it's over the top gory because the original wasn't gory. It was just, it was interesting and I, I enjoyed it. So I can't wait for that. It's actually coming out June 21st. Um, so summertime for that. And then the second movie was Dark Phoenix. Baby, you know I'm always on board for an X-Men feature. Always on board. And it's coming out this summer. The trailer looks really, really good. I'm so happy that we're finally getting to Jean Grey and the Phoenix. And they are doing her right. It looks like she is... You know, that last movie they did, she was much better. You know, because this whole thing of making the Phoenix look like a zombie... I'm not with it. She was never zombie-like. She was always absolutely drop-dead gorgeous with a bit with tons of blowing, flowing red, gorgeous hair that looked like fire. She never looked like a zombie. Now she'll tear you up. She'll tear you up. But she was always gorgeous. And I thought that they really skipped out on all of that. She looks wonderful in the trailer. Storm looks wonderful in the trailer for a change because they always downplay her too. Storm has always been, child, they screw Storm up in the, the movie realm from picking Halle Berry to play her. First mistake. Iman should have always been Storm. But anyway, out of rest. Anyway. But Storm looks really good. Um, both of their powers and things look amazing, Storm and the Phoenix. 
I've been waiting all this time. These are the two stories that I've been waiting to be told. Um, so I'm waiting on Storm's movie because she needs to be having one too. Um, all the effects though in the movie just looks like a big yes to me. So that's actually coming out this summer as well. I cannot wait. Can't wait. Alrighty. Swipe left. Okay. Something that I actually have to touch on that I kind of missed is another fashion moment. Down to the Oscars. Now, I actually gave this person my stamp of approval. And then I was sitting and I was watching... My good old sister show, honey, the Queen's Supreme Court with T.S. Madison. I was watching that on Monday, and she actually had a, a guest, uh, Gardini, was actually her guest of the Chase in Atlanta brand. Um, and Maddie pointed out something that I missed. Jennifer Hudson. Oh, my goodness. I gave Jennifer a stamp of approval. Dress I thought was beautiful. I didn't even pay any attention to Jennifer's shoes. She got me. She got by me. Jennifer, girl. Really? Really, Miss Jennifer? You know good and well, better than that, if you don't get your ass somewhere. Beautiful red dress. And then you come out there with shoes. Sponsored by Orville Redenbacher. Girl, all those corns on your feet and things, honey. I, it was hor I said, <gasps> yuck. I mean, corns piled up. Hammer toes. I, that was horrible. Now, there's no one who could have actually talked to me into no stylist, none, no stylist, could have talked me into cramming my feet down in them shoes and having all that corn and kernel, uh, there was a lot of corn and kernel play going on with them shoes. It looked terrible. She looked horrible by the foot. Her foot looked like she's broke out with the consumption. I said, oh. Anyway, a mess. Terrible, terrible fashion moment. And I just have to say thank you to Maddie for pointing it out because I truly missed that. When I, until I watched the Queen Supreme Court, I had completely missed that. She really got by me. All the ruffles on that dress had tainted my view, honey. And I didn't see all that nastiness going on down there around that ankle. Out of order. Completely out of order, Miss Hudson. Out of order. Swipe left. Okay, guys. On HBO this Sunday, March 3rd, there's actually going to be the release of this whole little show, this Leaving Neverland. This little documentary that actually chronicles things that it's the allegations really from Wade Robson and James Safechuck who are grown men now and they are actually going back and making allegations of sexual abuse against Michael Jackson and I don't even know how I really feel about this whole thing because it, it goes right along with the Me Too situation. It goes along with the R. Kelly situation. Um, I actually, I saw an interview with Dan Reed, who is the director and the producer of the project. And they gave him a question and they were asking him, well, what about, how did you do, you did this documentary without any input from the actual siblings and the actual family members? And he says, well, no, I have a lot of accounts and interviews and things and comments and things from lawyers. And again, there's some interview pieces from interviews that were actually used. Um, again, the family is completely against this. So I don't know what's really going on on the legal side of this, but it's actually coming on on Sunday. I don't know if I'm going to watch or not. 
But it leaves me with a question of why? Why the change in YouTube's story? Because these both of their cases were actually settled and he wasn't charged with any of this. And now he is actually passed on and they're actually coming out and they're changing their story. So I don't know what do we do with that? Like what do what do we do with that? I don't know. I don't know how I feel. I guess I'd have to watch it. I have to watch it to really know how I feel about that. Are we going to mute Michael Jackson? Will he be treated the same way as the R. Kelly stuff? Um, will this change people's feelings toward Michael and his music? I want to know what you guys have to say. I don't know. And I, and I guess I really would have to watch the documentary um, to see is this really worth the controversy it's causing? Is there really a reason to have controversy about this? Or should they need, or should they just shut up about this? I, don't, I'm not, I guess I'm going to have to watch it. But again, at this moment, I, I'm interested to see. Put it in the comments. What do you think? Do you think this is going to change people's perception of the King of Pop? Interested to see what you guys have to say. Swipe left. Good news on the Jackson front is Janet is doing big things. I was so excited to see this. Janet Jackson has a residency in Las Vegas starting in May. And it's going to run through August. I said, oh, Janet. Right smack dab in the middle of the summer. But okay, girl. But she's going to be in Vegas. It's actually called Metamorphosis. And it's actually celebrating 30 years since Rhythm Nation. Can you believe 30 years? Rhythm Nation is 30 years old. I was just saying this last week about Mary J. Blige that I couldn't believe that the My Life album was 25 years old. But literally, Rhythm Nation, it's been 30 years. 30 years. That is amazing. But Miss Janet is going to be burning up Vegas. I got to see. Y'all know I love me a little old nasty trip to Vegas, child. Just one more reason for me to get on out there and see Tiki. <laughs> Tiki44. Shout out to Tiki44 over on the YouTube front. Hey, Tink. <laughs> and y'all check her out. If you all, if you like me, you'll like Tiki. She talks a lot of stuff. A lot of stuff. She jumps in her car. She talks a lot of stuff. It's my friend Tiki. <laughs> Tiki44 over on YouTube. Anyway, so, but congratulations, Janet Jackson, girl. We'll see you in Vegas, honey. I'll see you down with the glitz and the glamour and the lights, girl. I know the show's going to be fabulous. Yeah, got to go see her. All right, guys, swipe left. How do you feel about people making decisions about image for you? digest that. And I'm not talking about folks like myself. I'm not talking about fashion designers and stylists and things like that. I'm just talking about basic folk deciding what is best for you image-wise. How do you feel about that? Well, it happened to Cardi B. Can you believe that? Money. That Cardi B. Money bag, money bag, money bag. That Cardi B. The star. Recent Grammy winner. Cardi B. Let me tell you what happened. Cardi B. She actually went to a party. Um, it was a whole little event being given by a guy named Dan. Dan Blitzerian. He's a millionaire, and he actually had this event. And Cardi B was actually at the event. So, you know, it was something big, naturally, that she would have been there. And, um, look, fun. You know, it looked like they were having a good enough time. And he took a photo with Cardi. And she posted it on her Instagram, and he posted it on his Instagram. But there was a little difference. Oh, Dan decided to touch up or 
Photoshop, if you will. The photo. And in just just look at this. Just look. Do you see that in the side by side? Where he made her behind smaller and he made her stomach a little flatter. Now, he also, if you really, really look hard, there's another woman standing in the background. He actually touched her up too. So, Cardi didn't come out and say anything. You know, to my knowledge, she hasn't said a word. She didn't, you know, you know, Cardi will blast you. She hasn't said, hasn't said a word. Nothing at all. But she did remove her photo from her Instagram. He left his up. So that's part of the question. How do you feel about Dan basically pushing off his insecurities on to Cardi and the other woman? Because see, this don't have nothing to do with Cardi and how she feels about herself. Because we all know Cardi takes her clothes off and Cardi's on stage and Cardi, you know, Cardi, Cardi's good looking. Cardi don't have no body images that I, that, uh, you know, body insecurities or image insecurities that I know of. This, for me, I think, for I, th I feel as though he was completely out of order. Completely out of order. Being male and doing that to a female wasn't a good look. Wasn't a good look. I think if it was a, a female friend, it may not sting as much. Um, and I don't know that it stung her at all, but I can't imagine that it wouldn't have. That I, I just can't imagine that that wouldn't have stung any woman. And it really, for me, I think the whole pro the problem that lies with old millionaire Dan. He's the one with the issue. He's the one with the issue. You took and you photoshopped that picture without their permission. You photoshopped that picture to make it be what you wanted it to be. Well, who are you? Who are you to say that her body image needed to be touched up? Who are you? Because, yeah, I mean, in the research, I thought he's a millionaire, but he not a plastic surgeon. He's not a fashion designer. The event has something to do with cannabis. You sound a little insecure to me, Mr. Dan. A little insecure. I don't know. Y'all tell me, what do y'all think about other people? Deciding what your image should be for you. Put it down in the comments. I thought it was shady. Swipe okay. left. Okay, so I got to give a moment for the Oscars. I did a whole red carpet review and all of that on my channel for the Oscars. Great. It was no problem. It was great. Great time. Loved it. But I save this for Swipe Left because as soon as, as I figured out it was actually going on, I said, oh, yeah, this is perfect for a Swipe Left. Black women down at the Oscars. Black women really did us proud. And when I say us, I'm talking about, I'm actually speaking from my African-American piece of me <laughs> at this point, um, which would actually be, I guess we're, t we're talking about James now. I'm, this is the whole James thing. And, and, and Milan as well, because Milan is pretty much all the things about black women that I love. I try to emulate some of that. Um, but as a 
African American male, I feel as though the Queens actually did us very proud at the Oscars. Regina King in that beautiful white dress pulled off and won Best Supporting Actress for If Bill Street Could Talk and did a very moving speech. And then Cicely Tyson, 94 years old. Cicely is 94 and still working. You understand me? She's booked and busy. She's booked and busy. She actually was given an honorary Oscar. And she's the first black woman that that has ever happened to. First. She has a six decade long career. And she's still working, booked and busy. Ruth Carter won an Oscar for costume design for Black Panther. And then Hannah Beachler won an Oscar for production design for Black Panther. Hannah Beachler was the first African-American woman to even be nominated in that category. So, yes, the Queens did us good. They did us good. It was a very proud moment for me as an African-American male this past Sunday for the Oscars. I was very happy. I was just grinning, just a grinning, just a grinning. Had a good time. Had a good time. Down to the Oscars. Black women dominated the Oscars. Congratulations and thank you all. Thank you for the representation. We appreciate it and we love you. Don't believe anything you hear, honey. We love you, honey. Something that I definitely wanted to point out. Um, as I said, today is March the 2nd. Last month actually ended. Two days ago, it was February. February is Black History Month. And throughout the month, you you know, there's a lot of things. You know, I watch a lot of shows and there were lots of tributes done and lots of things talked about that aren't talked about all the time throughout the year because it's Black History Month. The one thing that I do have to put out there that I saw this February of 2019 that kind of got right to me and touched me in a spot was a show that I watch every day. I watch them every day. When they first, the very first day they came on the air, I reviewed and I put up a video, I posted a video about the show and I have been promoting and talking about the show. I've actually tweeted uh, multiple times. I've had my tweets have been read off on the show live um, and I literally love these women who are actually on there and what I'm talking about is the Sister Circle Live. Odd Webb Lunsford, Selena Johnson, Trina Braxton, and Miss Rashawn Ali. And um, these ladies, they do a panel show, you know, and they do their thing. They do their thing. They're the only one of their type. They're not that they're the only panel show, but they're the only panel show that is for African American women. And they actually came out and they paid homage to Black History Month. They did different things throughout the month, but this one day was really good for me. They came out and they all looked so regal and they had head wraps. They did their head and head wraps and each wrap was different. Each wrap was done in a different um, African fabric and they actually pay homage to black women who write and it's names that we all know or should know and if you don't know you need to make it your business to get to know and not just because I'm a writer, period, period. And if you're African-American, 
you need to know. These are names you need to know. These are names that are definitely names for you to be proud of. And those names are Toni Morrison, Alice Walker, Maya Angelou, and Nikki Giovanni. Each one of those women have literally when I say shake the foundation, they have shaketh the foundation when it comes to literary works. They have molded and shaped our world around literary works. They are four of the baddest sisters to ever do it. You understand me? But they pay homage to these four ladies and just the way they did it and the time that they actually took to do this because you don't see it a lot. You don't hear about literary works very much anymore unless you're a person that reads and you go out to things, to, to book shows and libraries. They, but just... In general, on television, you don't hear a whole lot about the literary work. That's where it all starts at. Everything you see on television begins from a literary work. Someone wrote it first. It was written, it was put out, and it was presented, and then it became a visual picture for you to see. Everything you see, everything you hear on radio, music, Everything entertainment starts from a literary work. So I was overjoyed with this and it just stuck out. And now that I have this little thing that I do here, then I can go ahead on and I can say what I need to say about it. And I enjoy this. So hats off to the Sister Circle Live. And here it is, another shameless little plug for my show that I love so much. The Sister Circle Live with Quad, Rashawn, Selena, and Trina. Down to the TV one. Every day. It actually comes on. You have to check your listings. It comes on at 12 p.m. for me here in Pittsburgh. It used to come on at 9 a.m., um, but now it comes on at 12 p.m. So check your listings and make sure you are checking out the Sister Circle Live. It is a very good show, very entertaining. They have some of the best guests, some of the best guests, all types of guests, actors, singers, uh, chefs. Fitness folk. I mean, it it literally, it is. It's a talk show on steroids is what it is. I enjoy it. I enjoy it and I do watch every day. All right. Thank you guys for that. Swipe left. Okay, you guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. I really, really appreciate you. I love you guys. And as you noticed, the show was a bit longer today than it generally is because I felt like I owed you a little bit of something. Last week, the show was a little bit shorter. And that wasn't by accident. While I was in my travels, there were only a few things that actually I ran across. What I will not do is fluff this production. I will not fluff it. If it doesn't move me, I ain't messing with it. I'm not going to. I try to keep the show right there in the 45 minute range, but um, I'm not going to fluff just to make it there. If I only run into 30 minutes worth of stuff, I'm not working with a network. I'm working on my YouTube channel. I make the rules. I dictate how the show goes. So no, I'm not going to fluff it to make it to 45 minutes. If I don't have 45 minutes worth of interesting conversation, I'm not doing it. Now last week, I actually ended, It was we ended early because I only had a few things that I ran into that I found that were interesting. This week we ran over a bit. Now we're even. And that's the way it'll be. We'll always stay even, Steven. And you know why? Because I'm never going to try to pull your leg. I'm going to give you the best of what it is that I have to give and nothing less.
All right, you guys, I thank you. I love you so much. Thank you for being here. I will see you again next week. Same time, same place. DJ, take me on out of here. <laughs>